Hello, everybody. My name is Ben Talsma from the Van Andel Institute for Education, and we are here to talk about one of my absolute favorite topics, and that is weirdness. So we're going to share some strange things today and hopefully give you some ideas about how to leverage the power of peculiarity in your classroom to keep those kids weird. First, a couple of frequently asked questions. First of all, there will be a recording available after this session so you can review anything that we go over. Also, in the chat box, there is a link to a hyperdoc with all of the resources that we are going to explore and discuss today. You can feel free to dive in there and check it out and open that thing up, share it out with your weird friends, um, investigate all of these resources going forward from this moment. And finally, in the background, we have Robin. Robin is going to be helping us out with tech issues today. So you can just ask questions in the chat box. She's also going to be running the polls and she uh, would like to say hello to everybody. Robin, take it away. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. And also, since this is a webinar on weirdness, you are probably wondering whether we have any strange things going on today. So today, our little twist of weirdness is going to be that we have a real live imaginary dinosaur in the building right now. She is going to say hi to us. Hey, say hello to everybody, Dinah, the imaginary dinosaur. Hello, Mark. Did you hear that, Robin? Yep, She's out there. I heard her. Yep, we have a re we have a real live imaginary dinosaur in the background who's going to be helping us out throughout the day. We also want to point out we are sponsored by Blue Apple Projects and Professional Development. We're a nonprofit organization, and the way that we support giving out free stuff like this and the resources that we create is when people purchase projects and professional development. So if you want to support the work that we do, head to blueappleteacher.org and check it out. We would absolutely love it. Now. Speaking of supporting work, our passion is supporting teachers in the work that you do, and we want to know what work it is that you do. So if you could just indicate which of those best describes the area that you work with, we'll go ahead and give you just 10, 15 seconds to make a quick check, and then we'll close that poll out and see who is in the webinar today. So Robin, let's give them about five seconds more, four, three, two, one, and let's close that pull out. It looks like we have got lots of middle school teachers here. Outstanding because um, middle schoolers are very, very strange. Lots of upper elementary teachers, some lower L, some high school, a great mix. Outstanding. I am glad that you are here. I am hoping that you find something that you can put back into your classroom to leverage the power of strangeness with your students. All right. So let's start off by being really, really honest. There is a lot of weirdness in our classrooms. I'm going to share some actual weirdness. There's a student, a real live teacher in a real live classroom working with actual kids, had one who was going to write with their cheek by taping a pencil to it. Found one student who is drinking chocolate milk out of his shoe. We found another student who was breeding snails inside of their desk. And I gotta tell you, as a teacher, I quite often felt like I was sometimes interacting with this class full of weirdness and weird O's. And I felt like I needed to bring the shoe down on them to some extent. I need to corral that weirdness. And that there certainly is a place for that, but weirdness is not something that we automatically need to squelch and conform to get kids to conform. Instead, we need to be able to cultivate weirdness for positivity. We're gonna explore that in just a minute by looking at what those two bars mean, one low and one high. It explores how weirdness is a really powerful thing, not just for our classrooms, but for our country. Because whenever we see these assessments of how the United States is doing, when we see those assessments on things with close-ended questions, we tend to perform pretty poorly. However, when we look at our society and our level of innovation, well, we are right up toward the top. In fact, we are the most creative large country in the world. One of the things that uh, is a real strength for our society is that we have figured out how to capitalize on innovation, peculiarity, strangeness, weirdness. And when we can cultivate that in our students, we can do our society a great big favor. So weirdness is kind of a big deal. Here's our itinerary today for exploring how to use the power of weirdness in our classrooms. We're going to talk about how we can use weirdness to cultivate a culture of innovation. 
We're gonna explore how we can um, allow our students to be their authentic selves by, by allowing their weirdnesses to come out. We're gonna use the uh, uh, power of strangeness to build understanding, to help students retain their learning. And there's some bonus weirdness at the end of a place to inject a little bit of uh, eccentricity into your classroom that none of you are expecting to see. So make sure you stick around to the end. And also at the very end, if you stick around to the very finish, we might have our imaginary dinosaur friend do some dancing for us. Dinah, the imaginary dinosaur friend, are you looking forward to that? Yes, I am. Dinah said she very much is looking forward to dancing for the group. So let's start with the idea of innovation. And to, to start with innovation, we wanna let you innovate. So I've got a picture of an envelope there. And I want you to think of what else that might be. Get your idea in your head or write it down. And then I want you to answer that poll question. What else could that envelope be? Now, if you were thinking one of those four things that's listed there, then go ahead and choose it. But if your idea was something different, then choose the other box. We're gonna give you just 10 more seconds to get that figured out. And then I'm gonna take a look at what those results look like. So five more seconds. Were you thinking one of those things that was on the list? Or were you thinking something completely different? Brad, let's close that in three, two, one, and... All right, so of the people in the audience, a lot of people were choosing things that were already on the list, but 30% of the people were thinking something that was weirder than any of those ideas. And that's a great thing. In order to expand our world of ideas, we need those weirdnesses. Right? When we get all of the students' ideas and a lot of them cluster around the same thing, we might be missing out on a whole nother avenue. I like to think about conceptual topography. Let's have a quick, weird discussion on the lay of the land when we think about ideas. It looks something like this. Typically, when we're trying to solve a question, if we try something new and it improves, we go up a little higher, that's good. We keep moving in that direction. If we try to solve something or come up with a new idea and things get worse, well, we say we gotta go in a different direction. And eventually, if we continue that pattern, we come to this place where if we take any difference, things get worse. We call that a local maximum, right? So we've solved a problem. If we try and change anything, it gets worse. But quite often, if we look beyond just those simple answers, if we get a little weirder, we can find new solutions. An example is the outhouse. For uh, hundreds of years, people worked, they solved little problems, they came up with a really good solution for how to build a great outhouse, it worked really well. You certainly wouldn't want to bring that indoors. That would create all sorts of problems. But when people were willing to take a step that made things a little worse, say bringing things indoors, they discovered that there was a whole new area to explore, an area of concepts to explore. That's why we all get to enjoy going to the restroom indoors instead of having to go outside in the cold. Now we can always ask ourselves, is our solution to this question the maximum? Or by getting a little weird, can we find something even better? Now, there's a little debate in the office about whether or not um, we actually will have upside down toilets at some point in time, but the point is the same. If we want to really find new heights, sometimes we need to take that jump to try something that seems a little wrong, a little weird, a little strange in order to find something that's truly innovative. And if you think about it, lots of innovations are just like that. The idea of vaccines, putting the disease inside your body seems very, very weird. Airbnb, this idea that you're just gonna go to a stranger's house and stay there is a very peculiar thing. The light bulb, when you don't have the infrastructure built around that is a very peculiar invention. And now it's the, uh, the symbol of having a great idea. So innovation by definition requires weirdness. It requires that you jump off of that local maximum and explore conceptual space to find something that's even better. So how in the world can we cultivate that in our classroom? How can we go from having this culture that schools quite often uh, corroborate, which says conform, do the norm, 
try and be that, that standard student. How can we make a true culture of weirdness and innovation happen in our classroom? The strategies that we're gonna to share today are all built around that idea. How can we cultivate that culture of innovation? One really important thing to do is to change the conversation. I know teachers, actual physical teachers who have said to kids, don't be weird, right? That sends the wrong message, let's cross that out. A lot of teachers have taken a step in the right direction. They told their students that it is okay to be weird. Just having that conversation is a step in the right direction. But I think we can go just a little bit farther, right? Instead of saying okay to be weird, okay implies that something is yeah kind of wrong, but we're gonna tolerate it. Why don't we celebrate eccentricity, celebrate the power of peculiarity by saying it's great to be weird. Weirdness gets a bad rap. We need to try and reclaim weirdness so that it doesn't get that bad rap. Speaking of bad raps, in that resource hyperdoc, I have a link to a bad rap about weirdness. And if you go into that hyperdoc, you can find it there. So one really important thing um, that you can do is create space for students to be strange, to seek out strangeness and to celebrate that. Here are a couple of ideas for things that you could do on a space, a time, maybe a weirdness Wednesday, where you explore some different fantastic facts and you have students collect the things that really strike them as strange but true. The human mind is built to pursue those things and we can create that culture of innovation by allowing students to, to live in a world where they're always seeking that out, ready to share that on Weirdness Wednesday. Here's a weird fact. Um, great big giant boats, when they are approaching a bridge that is too low for them, will quite often, instead of slamming the brakes on, they will accelerate. They'll accelerate into that bridge if it's a little bit too low for them to make it under. Reason is that the faster moving water has lower pressure, so the boat actually goes down so they can make it under the bridge. It blows my mind to think about tons and tons of metal accelerating straight at a bridge. It's weird. And celebrating that creates that culture of innovation. I love giving students an opportunity to share their strange skills or to do a unique show and tell, finding something that only they have or that only they can do. Like that wonderful weirdo right there dressed up as corn doing some singing and some dancing. When we celebrate that with our students, when we celebrate them for who they are and what they can do, the things that set them apart, we create that culture where they're free to really think in a creative fashion. We can share that with the world, with something like the Weirdness of the Week bulletin board, where every week your students are on the lookout for the strangest, coolest thing that you encounter. Maybe it's a weird work of art or a weird poem or a game they invented at recess. You can come together and vote on the most wonderful weirdness that you encountered that week as an intentional way to seek out eccentricity, strangeness, in order to celebrate that innovative mindset. I love open-ended questions as a way to cultivate that culture of um, weirdness and innovation. You can have students try another way. When they know one way how to answer a question, they can try alternative, try and come up with different pathways. When you do that on a regular basis, you drive home the message that we're always trying to be creative. I love the idea of wrong answers only. Again, to open up this idea that it's okay um, to make mistakes, you can have students look for the absolute best wrong, the best wrong ways to solve questions. I found some really good wrong ways to solve that question that highlight common misunderstandings. Another awesome strategy is MONS. That stands for most, always, worst, and never. Those are extreme words. And the MONS strategy is designed to encourage students to push their thinking to the extreme, try and go a little more or a little less, just like that question right there, what's the most interesting thing that we could do with our oobleck? Pushing students to those extremes encourages that innovator's mindset. If you really wanna dive into student understanding in the student mind, ask them to justify their thinking and then ask them to justify that thinking. By asking them to explain their explanations, you really dive deep into that weird mind that belongs to your student. And you can help them understand how really understanding concepts deeply is essential for true innovation. And if you want to get weird answers, you need to ask some weird questions. So I have built a uh, generator that will ask you an analogy a day comparing two strange things. 
or which will ask you a peculiar question, a square peg kind of question. We've got some listed on the boards there. If you think of any great answers to those, you can email me at ben.talsma at vai.org and I will send a weird prize to the best one. The point here, I know we're going over a lot of content. Remember, it's all there in the resource hyperdoc. But the point is that there are lots of ways to encourage students to embrace their inner weirdo because it encourages this culture of innovation. The idea of creative constraints is another powerful way to do this. When you say students have to fit within a certain um, interesting challenge, then you can push them to solve those puzzles in creative ways. So wraps are a great way to do that. With writing assignments, we can tell students they have to adopt a role, write to a certain audience, um, write in a certain format, and write on a certain topic. Well, when you do that, you can pick some interesting ones to really challenge students to open up their creative thinking. If you're having students do summaries, you can have them do it in 30 characters or fewer. Again, putting a constraint on something can sometimes encourage some real creative solutions to figuring out how to get around that constraint. Chain letters, where you have students uh, start to answer a question and then pass it to somebody new and have them build on the thinking of another student will get you some real weird stuff really fast, but it also encourages that creative thinking because students have to connect their thinking to the thinking of others. So the idea of creative constraints can be a powerful one for building a culture of innovation in your classroom. I am curious, which of those ideas would you like to try with your students? You can pick more than one. I'm curious, uh, Dinah the dinosaur, what do you think about those strange ideas? Those are great ideas. Dinah the dinosaur likes all of those ideas, if she really exists. It's possible that I'm just talking behind my mouth this whole time. We'll find out at the very end of the webinar. All right, Robin, let's go ahead and close that poll in three, two, one, and let's find out what people are finding useful. All oh, the Weirdness Wednesday is our winner today. Also, a lot of people want to do con creative constraints, and every single option got many, many votes. Outstanding. I'm glad that you are going to try some of those with your students. Find out how to bring that weirdness to the fore. All right. I do think it is important that we take just a second to say that weird ideas must be put to the test. Not every different idea is a good one. For example, instead of driving that boat faster at the bridge, if you drive your semi faster at the bridge, you will just end up on the nightly news. So we need to encourage a culture where students put their weird ideas to the test. The best way to do that, one of the most powerful strategies you can use with your students is the truth contagion strategy. Here, you just ask them a question. You ask them, for instance, how many triangles are in that picture that I just flashed up on the screen? You have them count, there is a right answer, but you have students try and do some individual thinking and they come up with the answer that they think is correct. You get all those different ideas out there and then you have students vote. Which ones do they think are the correct answer? Once you've done that, then you have them chat. And here's where the magic comes in. You have them see whether or not they can evaluate ideas to see whether they're good or bad, whether they can change their mind if they get a good idea or hold fast if they don't get a good idea to change. And then at the end, you can come back and you can re-vote. Now, you're able to see really clearly, did the truth spread through the classroom or were students deceived? If you've got a classroom, where the truth can spread, where students are really good at testing out good ideas, then they're, they're gonna be really good at taking the weird, strange ideas and figuring out which ones are great to follow and which ones are more like that semi-truck. So if you've got those students who can evaluate ideas, connect and collaborate with each other effectively, you're gonna have a classroom where weirdness can really result in true innovation. Now, how many triangles do you think there are in that picture? If you take just a quick look at that, what do you think the best answer might be? Robin, let's open up that poll question. And again, we're moving fast today. You're not gonna have enough time to take a deep dive into this, but you're gonna have to make your best choice. I'm only gonna give people about 10 more seconds. How many triangles do you think there are?
All right, Robin, let's close that poll out and see what people think. All right, most people think 24 is the correct, although 15 is right behind and all of them got some votes. If you are interested in the correct answer, again, you can dive into that handy hyperdoc. I wanna encourage people to get into those resources and really put them to good use. Um, so if you wanna check it out because your curiosity has been activated, go ahead and find the answer in the handy hyperdoc. All right, we've talked about innovation. We've talked about how we need to put our creative ideas to the test. Now let's explore student authenticity with a quick little story. When I was assistant principaling, I once had a girl come to me because she was getting picked on for being weird. And she was kind of weird. And I told her that. I said, they're exactly right. You are weird. You are strange. You are bizarre. But I will tell you a secret. All the best people are. And she took that going forward and it was real positive. She could embrace the fact that she was different than other people and that that was a valuable thing. We need to celebrate students for their uniqueness, build them up for the things which make them them. That's how we have that culture of creativity, that culture of weirdness. So how can you allow weirdness to flourish in your classroom? A great way is to create some nicknames of greatness. Find out what your students are interested in and what they care about, and then you can refer to them uh, in a way that alludes to that. So your student who loves space can be astronaut Sam. Your student who's a, really into music, uh, classical music, you can call them Carnegie. Uh, ask them first. You always want to make sure that you're calling somebody something that they like, but you can affirm this idea that you believe in them and that you know that if they work hard and pursue their passions, they can do great things. I love the open their gifts idea. You can identify different skills and talents that your students have, and then figure out how to put those to use in the classroom. You'll help students understand that you see their gifts, you see and value the things that they make them unique, and that they have a role to play in your class. I love this question of what you wonder. When you understand what students are curious about, you understand their uniqueness more deeply. I just had a couple of wonderings that will let you understand me more deeply. I had two identical water bottles in my van. I left them there overnight. One was frozen, one was not. What could have happened? I was just talking with my colleague, Jamie, the other day, and I noticed that on Zoom, I could see straight through her head. And I was curious what in the world could be causing these phenomenons. In fact, I'd like you to tell me, what do you think is wrong with Jamie's face? Why can I see right through it? Which of those do you think is the best of all the answers? Yes, this is a weird poll question, but it is a webinar on weirdness. We must lean into it. Go ahead, make your quick pick. Let's see what people think. Robin, let's close that out in five, four, three, two, one, zero. What in the world is wrong with Jamie's face? Oh, I think it's just a trick of the light. Interesting. Although the Thanos idea got a lot of traction as well. If you've got a great other idea I would about either of those phenomena, I would love to hear it. You can email me ben.tulsma at bai.org. I want this to be a conversation that we have together. So sending an email is a great way to open that up. Now, if you collect the things that students are wondering, set aside some time to explore them. I love the wonder wheel idea where you can spin that wheel and then pursue one of those curiosities for a little while. Wonderful learning experience. I love the idea of trying to reclaim failure. When we tell our students, if I never see you failing, something is wrong because I know that you're not trying to stretch yourself, you're not challenging yourself sufficiently. So you can celebrate those failures, say you have failed at that and that is a marvelous thing because I know that you are not one of those cold and timid souls who knows neither victory nor defeat. You are putting yourself out there and putting yourself in a position to fail, which is a marvelous, marvelous thing for that culture where students feel like they can actually be themselves. So in terms of these eccentric ideas, which of those do you find valuable? Which of those would you like to put to the test? Rob has opened the poll. People are able to choose which ones they think are useful for them, which ones they might like to try. Let's close that poll out in three, two, one, and zero. Which of those ideas did you find marvelously eccentric? Oh my goodness, everything got at least 23% led by our letter, our, our leader. What 
you wonder. Yes, uh, I love the idea, by the way, of collecting those wonderings in an ask it basket. Just because ask it and basket rhyme, you can put those questions in an ask it basket and you can pull those out or put them into your wheel as a way to explore the intriguing things that your students are curious about. So we've talked about how to use weirdness for innovation, how to put that to the test, how to celebrate the uniqueness of our students. Now let's talk about understanding, understanding, understanding. Saw a cool study that said, we remember stuff better if it's written in a font that we have to work a little bit to read, which doesn't mean that we have to do everything in wingdings, but if you've got a word that you really want students to retain, you can put it in a font that's just a little bit more difficult to comprehend because novelty sticks. Think for just a minute about the strangest food that you ever ate. It's not any of those normal, ordinary, boring foods. It's gonna be something different, something unique. The, our, the human mind is built to retain the things that are different. Those are the things which expand our understanding like that delicious ramen burger. So um, I was just talking with a teacher who remembered all about plate tectonics because of a song that his teacher showed him in eighth grade. He goes, ha ha, Alfred Wegener, you are a crazy man. Ha ha, Alfred Wegener, you are a crazy, crazy man. It's about the origin of plate tectonics and it's stuck in his mind because it's a really weird video, which I again linked in the uh, hyperdoc there. So if you wanna check that out, uh, it's a cool resource that you can use with the kids but the main idea is novelty sticks. So how can we use it in our classroom? First, you can use the baboon effect, which is just interjecting a funny, silly element into an otherwise normal question or task. One of our best resources, our most popular resources is called the baboon's dilemma, which as somebody pointed out on YouTube is really just a riff off of a famous game theory thing called the prisoner's dilemma. But by flexing it, we made it a little sillier and a little more engaging. In the hyperdoc, you're gonna see a link to a strategy that you can use to inject the baboon effect into even how you greet your students. And it doesn't have to be a baboon, it can be a weasel, it can be a funny place name, you can invent a silly villain, just injecting a little levity into otherwise ordinary assignments takes them to the next level. You can do the same thing with mystery, the mystery box where you put something from your content uh, hidden inside a box, or you zoom out on a picture, or you slowly reveal one, has the effect of making students wonder what that is. It makes them curious what this strange novel thing is, and that means it's gonna stick even better. There's an example right there. And we also wanna make sure that we diversify our toolkit. If you've only got the same two or three tips and tricks, students are gonna grow kind of weary with that. So one of our coolest resources is called Strategy Explorations, totally free, linked in the hyperdoc, with hundreds of different ways that you can accomplish all of these different important things that good teachers need to do. All right, which of those do you think is excellently peculiar as we approach the end of our time together today? Which of those do you think is excellently peculiar? Just a 10 second opening for this window. I'm curious what we find excellently bizarre. All right, Robin, let's close that in five, four, three, two, one, and let's see what we've won. Ah, uh, the mystery box is our favorite. That is one of my absolute favorite strategies. I love that people are going to put that to use. The last thing I want to share is that we have um, this idea that tests have to be boring and staid, but they don't. One great thing to do is sometimes give them a question with no right answer. This drives home the message that the man doesn't always have the right answer. Sometimes your thinking is the thinking that you need to follow and pursue. It's a great thing to ask at the end of any question, any assessment is what else do you know? Encourage students to do some learning outside of what's there and take a glimpse at what they think is important but wasn't on the test. You can also mismark the test. This is one of our coolest weird strategies. Just mark three questions wrong that were actually right and then challenge students to dive in and find which ones they are. Really encourage students to take a deeper look at which questions they did not understand. All right, before we hit the road today, I do need you to indicate, we've been talking to Dinah throughout the day today. What dance would you like her to do? Go ahead and make your vote. Dinah, are you ready to dance? 
Dinah says she's ready to dance. What is our dance going to be? Robin, let's close that poll in three, two, one. Close it out. Oh, it looks like Dinah's gonna be doing some freestyle hip hop, but before our imaginary dinosaur friend does some freestyle hip hop, I wanna point out, we've got another awesome free webinar coming up. It is on a Wednesday. That Wednesday is called December 14th. It's gonna run from four to 4.37. It's also gonna be free and fun. You can find that at baei.org. If you like what you heard, if you like a little weirdness in your life, go ahead and let your administrator know about us. We love to come to schools. We can customize professional development to fit your content, your schedule, your budget. We can even customize it to go anywhere from deeply strange to perfectly normal. It's absolutely up to you. And after Dinah, our imaginary friend dances, you will be given a survey. If you fill that survey out, you can win valuable prizes and we're gonna choose three winners tomorrow. In conclusion, thank you for your time. I hope you found something valuable and I encourage you to stay weird, just like my weird friend, Dinah the Dinosaur doing freestyle hip hop. <laughs> Diana says goodbye, everybody. Have a great day and definitely stay weird. <laughs>